Hey everybody, Griffin Hales with Electric Bike Report, and today I have with me the Unirau Defender S. This is an absolute beast. This is an all-terrain fat tire e-bike that comes equipped with not one, but two 750 watt hub motors, and it is a lot of bike. We are going to dive into everything on this bike from specs to performance to value and our overall thoughts. So make sure to stick with us as we go through our testing and review. All right, now before we get into all of the testing and performance, there are a couple of things I want to note off the bat. First, this e-bike is equipped, as I mentioned before, with two 750 watt motors. What that means is if you're riding at full bore, that is 1500 watts of power. Now because of that, you do need to familiarize yourself with your local laws to know where you can operate the Defender S. For the, our testing purposes, we largely kept this to OHB areas, like where you would see dirt bikes, or we kept it on city streets. This is not a bike path e-bike by any means. It is a lot larger, a lot heavier, and very, very powerful, exceeding the limits in most places. So do familiarize yourself with your local laws. Now, that power, like I said, is a lot of fun, and it is why I think that this e-bike is a little bit more situated for people who have either a dirt bike or motorcycle background, or just more seasoned e-bike riders. That power is a blast when you have a handle for it, but it does take a little handling know-how, so I don't see it as being the most user-friendly for e-bike newbies or people who haven't cycled in a while. I'd say warm up to it and get to that point, and then you'll be ready to handle this bike when it is at full throttle. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a lot of good utility to this bike. It is a lot of fun and it serves a lot of good purposes. As you can see through the camo paint job that is on this bike, it is something that is actually largely built and tailored for a hunting crowd. Unirau even says that this bike is great for hunters due to the fact that it can haul so much. They come with, on their website, Unirau does offer an accessory where you can add a cargo trailer for be, uh, towing behind the Defender S, as well as a rack that you can attach on it. It makes it pretty good for hauling game and for getting to and from. You have a lot of power to help move that around. Now, while that is a good utility for it, I do think that dirt bikers in particular will enjoy this bike. When we took this out on OHV areas, that is where I saw it absolutely in its element. It eats up those hills. We took it over sand, we took it over dirt, a little bit of uh, through the brush, and it handled very, very well. And again, when you really open up the throttle, it can do a lot of things. Now, there are a couple of spec highlights that I want to go through just really quick. We've mentioned the two motors. It also comes equipped with a 672 stock watt hour battery that can be upgraded as well. Um, it also has 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. Those we will dive more into in our braking test. And of course, for comfort, we have a 75 millimeter RST fork in the front with an EXA rear shock providing just a little bit more comfort for smoothing out those roads as you're going over bumps keeping you a little bit more comfortable as you ride. Now, we're gonna dive into all the breakdown of our testing and the data we've collected on this, but just know that if you wanna know more about the specs, you can head back to our website through the link we're going to leave in the description below, and you can walk through the spec sheet there. Now let's go ahead and dive into the testing and data. All right, so let's go through our brake test. The EBR brake test is where we bring all the bikes we review up to 20 miles per hour, and then we come to a complete stop. Now we do this test three different times to give ourselves an average, and then we measure that braking distance to get a better sense of how the brakes perform. Now on the Unirau Defender S, it came to a stop in an average of 24 feet and one inches. Now, that result is a little bit lower than some of the other hydraulic disc brakes that we have tested before. So I do have a few thoughts about braking overall. Number one, as I've mentioned a few times already, there is a lot of power on this bike with 1500 watts between the two motors and it, it's got torque for days. So I do hope to see a better counterbalance to all of that power with some better stopping. While I don't think it is wildly unsafe or anything like that, I would hope to see something a little bit more reputable in the braking department. The brakes are branded as Unirau brakes, which are fine. A lot of different companies will put their own branding on brakes, 
but if you take those into a service center, they might not be sure how to service them best, might not have the right lead kit for them or know which one to use. So in the future, I would hope to see something a little bit like along the lines of a Tektro hydraulic disc brake set, which has typically stopped a little bit quicker. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind. Overall, they break just a little bit on the slower side compared to some other bikes. So next up is our range test. Here at EBR, we do the range test two different times on the lowest assistance setting and the highest assistance setting. And that gives you an idea of the real world range you can have while riding around on the Unirau Defender S. Now, again, this comes with a stock 672 watt hour or 14 amp hour battery. And that is the one that we use for testing purposes. Unirau was nice enough to send us their optional 17 amp hour battery as well. Uh, we use that for a lot of our testing, but we decided that we'd test out the stock one on this range test. Now, as for the results, we saw that on the minimum assistance uh, range test, we got about 41 miles, two hours and 42 minutes in the saddle at 15.2 miles per hour. Now, on the max assist range test, where we had both motors engaged, we saw eight and a half miles, 19 minutes of ride time at a whopping 26 miles per hour. Now, that is a lot, uh, that is a lot of speed on the high end there, and I've got some thoughts on the uh, max assist range test. That was one of the fastest bikes I've ever ridden here at EBR, and I've ridden a lot of bikes. As I mentioned before, to keep things in compliance, we only tested this out on city roads, not on bike paths, and I was absolutely cruising in Holland. Now, since it does have the one battery that both motors are drawing off of, that is what led to shorter ride time of only just under 20 minutes. It wasn't here for a long time, but it was here for a good time for sure. Now, Unirau offers you the option to upgrade that battery or to add a second battery, which is something I would recommend if you plan on using a lot of that dual motor as it will drain the battery pretty quickly. Um, we did do a lot of testing out in OHV areas and while that was a lot of fun, I can definitely see if you're using two motors, having your ride time cut down pretty quickly. So a second battery is something probably worth considering. Now for the minimum assist range test, 41 miles was very good. I actually really liked how it felt. It is a big heavy bike. It weighs a little over 80 pounds. It has a very wide tires. It is not pedal friendly if you are riding with a dead battery, but in pedal assist level one, it was very good because it did give you just enough assistance to get your heart rate going a little bit, have you feel like you were still doing some of the work, but it was giving you enough assistance that it didn't feel grueling. So overall, pretty interesting range results. Next up in our testing is our circuit test. For the EBR circuit test, what we do is we take the bike out to a one mile loop that has a 30 foot climb and we do one lap around that loop in each pedal assist setting as well as one with no pedal assist at all. This helps establish how fast the bike goes at each uh, pedal assist setting and gives us a chance to really dial into that motor engagement and feel overall. So without any motor assistance at all, we started at about 12.2 miles per hour, jumped up to 15 and a half miles with pedal assist turned on, and then we saw two to three mile per hour increment increases from there all the way up to level five. Now, I have a few thoughts about that overall. Number one, we always love to see distinguished uh, speed profiles at each different setting. It's very nice to be able to kind of dial your speed in, decide how quickly you want to go, and so we love to see those incremental jumps. A couple other uh, things to note as well. We did perform this with just the rear hub motor engaged. It was not with dual motors. So you would see faster performance results there. Again, we're trying to keep things uh, street legal and friendly as we were doing the testing on this bike. The other thing that I wanted to mention is the throttle engagement. Now we usually don't talk too much about the throttle on our circuit test, but since I'm talking about motor engagement, I think it's worth bringing up. As I mentioned before, this is probably not a first timer's e-bike. It does take a little bit of understanding what 1500 watts of power feels like. And when you engage that throttle, it can be a little jarring at first. First time I hit it, I definitely remember kind of like having my head snap back a little bit. Now it's a lot of fun when you know how to handle that, but it is something that can catch you a little bit off guard, depending on the situation you're in. Especially when you're taking this off-roading, it is something to always be aware of. When you hit that power, it is there and it is there instantly. Um, when you are turning the cranks on the pedals and pedal assist, it takes it's typical about half a second to a second or so for it to kick on. And if you have that in pedal assist five, when it kicks on, it kicks on pretty hard. So just be aware of that as you're riding it in different areas. But overall, it is a pretty good engaging motor. We do very much appreciate seeing different speed profiles. All right, now we wanna walk you through the cockpit layout on the Defender S and just speak a little bit more to the overall handling on this bike. 
So starting on the left hand side here, you'll notice these lock on rubber grips. Um, I'm always a big fan of these, this style of grips. I think it's pretty comfortable and pretty good for keeping your hands on the bike. Uh, the thumb throttle is on the left. It has a lever, a lever throttle that is pretty decent at getting some modulation. Um, I think in the lower PAS settings, but if you're in PAS 5, it kind of seems like all or none sometimes. On the left hand side, we still we have that LCD display over there. It is pretty bright, pretty easy to see. It gives you your readout of battery percentage, what PAS you're in, how fast you're traveling, and your odometer as well. Um, one thing worth noting on the readout, um, while I was doing the range test, it did actually say I had more battery than I thought because the bike did end up dying on me when it said I still had about 40% battery left. So that is something just to be aware of. I did see a little bit online that some other people have had similar experiences, so not sure how common that is. Just get very used to how many miles you're able to ride um, before you get caught out and have to pedal the bike back home without anything. Uh, moving over to the right side there, we will see the Shimano Acera shifter. Uh, with rapid fire triggers this is very nice and convenient i like it and i think nine uh, different gears to go through is the right amount for an off-road bike and then you even have a little bell included as well and then you'll see the unirail brake levers up front now going down through the body of the bike there is the rst 75 millimeter travel fork up front it is pretty good like i said it's very nice to have that to soak up some of that um, chatter that you'll encounter while going out on the roads I did think it was a little on the springy side for me. Um, I noticed it kind of like popped up in some ways that was a little surprising given the overall weight of the bike. Um, but again, I prefer to have that fork there. Um, in the rear here, we have the EXS rear shock, um, similar to the fork up front. It's nice, it does its job. It is a little bit on the bouncy end as well, but I do appreciate kind of having that comfort there. Now, the tires that this rolls on are Kenda tires. They are four inches Thick. They do a very good job of kind of floating over the surfaces of the dirt and sand that we've been riding it around on here. Um, they held up very well, didn't have any punctures or any uh, popped tubes, so did pretty good throughout all of our testing. Um, the frame of the Defender S is an aluminum frame. Overall, it's pretty solid. The camo paint job is pretty nice if that's what you're into. They do have three different color options overall. The one thing that we didn't love that you're going to be noticing throughout the video is we do have a lot of duct tape that's around there. Reason being is we tried several different times to try and fix that uh, battery. It did drop out, we couldn't get it fixed again, so we kind of went field medic and just fixed it with what we had. Now, up front there is a little bit of cabling to be aware of as well. This cable that runs over to the front hub motor, it is kind of out there. At first we had a little anxiousness over if it would snag or anything. We rode it past some bushes, it seemed to hold up just fine. Uh, it is something that we wish it was a little bit tighter on the fork, but of course with that suspension fork, you can't run it internally like some other front hub motors do. So it is just kind of something that you do have to be aware of and uh, make do with. Now, as to the overall handling of the bike, this is a very heavy bike at over 80 pounds. What that means is the how it handles is just going to be fundamentally different from your typical bike. Uh, I noticed that I typically like to counter steer, meaning I just like to lean into the turns, actually pointing the wheel slightly away from where I'm leaning, and that's how I usually turn. This one, you are going to operate those handlebars a lot more in order to move comfortably around on this bike. But between the weight and the wide tires, and of course the motors, it is something that handling, once you get, once you get it down, it's actually pretty nice overall, I'd say. Now, as you are climbing up and down hills, there are a couple things to be aware of with dual motors. Since you have the one in the rear pushing you, as well as the, run, the motor in the front, pulling you, it is a little bit different sensation if you are leaning too far, for, too far forward or too far backwards. What I mean by that is sometimes it can feel like you're trying to pull you under, sometimes it can feel like it's trying to pull you up. This is why I keep coming back to the, if you have a dirt bike or a motorcycle background or you're just a more experienced e-bike rider, I think it's a little bit better suited for you, you'll be a little bit more comfortable and know how to handle it. It's all about adapting and getting used to it at the end of the day, but it is something that is going to be a little bit of an experience for newer or less experienced riders. Overall, I'd say that the package that they're giving you here is pretty adequate. You're getting a lot of different features on this bike for under $3,000, which is overall pretty impressive. And I think it's going to be comfortable for most people out there. Lastly, we have the hill test. For the EBR hill test, we take all of our bikes out to Hell Hole, which is about a third of a mile long and a 12% average grade, which is a pretty steep and extreme example of a hill. We do this to test bikes to their absolute limit and see what the motors can do under serious strain. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the results because they are actually one and the same. 
on both the throttle and the maximum pedal assist, we both times got 55 seconds at an average of 19 miles per hour going up the hill, which is amongst the fastest times we have ever recorded. Not too surprising given the fact that this has two motors instead of one. Now, as I've said throughout this review, this bike is an absolute beast and can really move and go up hills and almost doesn't seem to regard them at all. Something that I noticed that was really interesting on every hill that I went around, it's very common to see bikes slow down to some degree as it's on a hill just because it only has so much output that it's capable of. This one really didn't seem to break its stride at all, which is why I think we have the same throttle and pedal assist result. The bike really does just take over and gets you to the top of those hills without any problem. So overall, very impressed with the hill climbing capabilities of the Unirau Defender S. So bottom line thoughts on the Unirau Defender S. I think that this bike is going in the right direction in a lot of different ways. At its heart, I think this is a dirt biker's e-bike. This largely would go in those same OHV areas where you see dirt bikers playing around. This could follow and keep up with some of them in all honesty. It is a lot of fun in those areas and it definitely can be a, u a useful tool for hunters. It's been decked out with the camo paint job and with the trailer that you're able to haul behind it as something you could do for hunting. It has its limits and if you understand those limits and stay within them, it is something that will be pretty great to use. You of course have those two motors there which are a lot of fun, which are a huge draw overall as to why people are going to look at the Unirau Defender S, but they do have a few caveats and a few drawbacks. Number one, you do need to be prepared to operate them and have a familiarity with bigger, heavier, more powerful bikes. And number two, it can be a little bit of handling quirks as you're going uphill or downhill, depending on how far forward or backwards you are leaning as you operate it. There are a couple of things that I think need to be tightened up a little bit. I wish the cable management up front was a little bit nicer with that cord that leads down to the front hub motor. And of course, I do wish that the battery cover had not had any dropouts. I don't know if that's unique to our bike or to other bikes as well. And we did notice that as we were riding around a few different times, we did have the chain drop down. Wish that was a little bit less slack as well. But again, this bike does have a lot going for it. It is a powerful beast. It is a lot of fun. If you add a second battery, you can really get off road and have a really great time. Now, if you found this review helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the Electric Bike Report channel. And then for more details and more data that we collected on this bike, you can find that back at the Electric Bike Report website. We will leave a link down in the description below, along with a link for current pricing so you can see if this is the bike for you. Again, I'm Griffin Hales, and thank you for watching.